song called Pearly Shells. So you guys, are you ready? All right, let's do the hand motions and everything so that everyone will see you singing this. Ready? Pearly shells, pearly shells from the ocean, from the ocean, shining in the sun, shining in the sun, covering the shore, covering the shore. When I see them, when I see them, my heart tells me that I love you more than all those little pearly shells, pearly shells. Don't they do a beautiful job? Okay, you guys, and guess what? Now it's time to turn around and face me, and you can sit right there. Okay, we have lots of stories today. Do you guys think you could be monkeys? Do you think you could pretend you're monkeys for this story? So you have to, co you have to copy what I do. So if I do this, you need to do it back to me. Let me hear you do it. And if I do, you need to do that back to me. Let me see. Okay, I think you're going to... Good. All right. So you guys are the monkeys. Don't forget, you're going to copy everything I do. Caps for sale. This is one of my favorite stories. You like it? Okay. All right. Ready? Once there was a peddler who sold caps. But he was not like an ordinary peddler carrying his wares on his back. He carried them on top of his head. First, he had on his own checkered cap then a bunch of gray caps, then a bunch of brown caps, then a bunch of blue caps, and on the very, very, very top was a bunch of red, red caps. He walked up and down the streets, holding himself very straight so as not to upset his caps. And as he went along, he called, Caps! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! One morning, he couldn't sell any caps. He walked up the street and he walked down the street calling, Caps! Caps for sale! Fifty cents a cap! But nobody wanted any caps that morning. Nobody even wanted a red cap. He began to feel very hungry, but he had no money for lunch. I think I'll go for a walk in the country, said he, and he walked out of town slowly, slowly, so as not to upset his caps. Now I want you to take a good look. He walked for a long time until he came to this great big tree. <gasps> That's a nice place for a rest, he thought. And he sat down very slowly under the tree, and he leaned back against the tree trunk so as not to disturb those caps on his head. Then he put his hand on top of his head to feel if all the caps were straight. First he checked his own checkered cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, and on the very, very top were the red caps. They were all there. So he went to sleep. He slept for a long, long time. And when he woke up, oh, he was refreshed and rested. You see anything funny? But before standing up, he felt with his own hand to make sure his caps were in the right place. All he felt was his own checkered cap. He looked to the right of him. No caps. He looked to the left of him. No caps. He looked behind him. No caps. He looked up into the tree, no caps. Then he looked into the tree, and what do you think he saw? Monkeys. Monkeys? <gasps> on every branch sat a monkey, and on every single monkey was a gray, or a brown, or a blue, or a red cap. The peddler looked at the monkeys. And the monkeys looked at the peddler. 
He didn't know what to do. And finally, he spoke to them. And he said, you monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only shook their fingers. Ready, monkeys? They shook their fingers back at him and they said, This made the peddler angry. So he shook both his hands at them and he said, you monkeys, you, you give me back my cat. But the monkeys only shook both their hands back at him and said, oh, you monkeys. Now he felt quite angry. He stamped his foot and he said, you monkeys, you, you give me back my cat. But the monkeys only stamped their feet and said, uh-oh. By this time, the peddler was really very, very, very angry. He stamped both his feet and he said, you monkeys, you, you give me back my caps. But the monkeys only said, at last, he became so angry that he took his own calf, he pulled it off, and he threw it on the ground. And he started to walk away. But then, each monkey pulled off his cap, and what? And all the gray caps, and all the brown caps, and all the blue caps, and all the red caps came flying down out of the tree. Monkey see, monkey do. So the peddler picked up his caps and he put them back on his head. First, his own checkered cap, then the gray caps, then the brown caps, then the blue caps, and on the very, very top were the red, red caps. And slowly, very slowly, while he walked back into town calling, Caps, caps for sale, 50 cents a cap, and that's the end. What do you think? Thumbs up? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Oh, I think thumbs up. You were the best monkeys ever. Thumbs in the middle? Thumbs up. I think thumbs up. That's one of my favorite stories. Okay. All right. You guys feel like dancing? Oh, you like this dance, I know. Then you're going to say, can I do it? All right, this is called Dance Away. Okay, Dance Away. Ready? Rabbit loved to dance, just like you. He danced in the morning. He danced at noon. He danced at night with the stars and the moon. Every time he danced, he smiled a big, huge smile. And everywhere he danced, he sang his dancing song. Left, two, three, kick. Right, two, three, kick. Left, skip. Right, skip. Turn around. When he saw his friends, he would begin to dance with them. Left two, three, kick, right, two, three, kick, left, skip, right, skip, turn around. His friends liked to dance, but not all the time. Still, every time Rabbit met them, he would make them start to dance. Left, two, three, kick, right, two, three, kick, left, skip, right, skip, what? Turn around. Rabbit's friends began to hide when they saw him coming. Watch out, they would call. Here he comes again, and Rabbit will have us dancing. So Rabbit came by, left, two, three, kick, right, two, three, kick, left, skip, right, skip, turn around. But one afternoon, when Rabbit danced towards his friends, no one moved. No one went to hide. And Rabbit called, hello, but no one said a word. As Rabbit got closer, he knew the reason why. They were trapped 
by Fox. Caught for Fox's supper. Good, growled Fox as Rabbit came near. Another one for dessert. <laughs> now all of them were trapped. They knew they could not all run safely away. Mo sat and shivered as Fox began to choose which, which rabbit would go first. But Rabbit asked, please, as he nodded to his friends. Could I dance with my friends just one more time? Before Fox could answer, Rabbit took a friend's hand and began to sing his song. Then each took another's hand and they all began to dance. <coughs> Left, two, three, kick. Right, two, three, kick. Left, skip. Right, skip. Turn around. Yeah. Fox was so surprised he didn't know what to do. But when Rabbit danced by, he told Fox what to do. Dance, Rabbit said as they grabbed his legs. Left, two, three, kick. Right, two, three, kick. Left, skip. Right, skip. Turn around. Fox screamed, stop! But the dancing went on. Left, two, three, kick. Right, two, three, kick. Left, skip. Right, skip. Turn around. Rabbit kept singing, and they all kept dancing. Every step they took, they danced a little faster. Left, two, three, skip. Right, two, three, skip. Right, skip. Left, skip. Turn around. Left, two, three, kick. Right, two, three, kick. Left, skip. Right, skip. Turn around. And see them dancing with them? They're all, they all have fox. As they came to the river, Rabbit sang with a shout. Left, two, three, kick. Right, two, three, kick. Left, skip. Right, skip. Turn around and jump. See them all jumping? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Everyone jump. But halfway across the river, they let go of Fox. He crashed, splat into the cold river water as Rabbit and his friends landed safely on the grass. Then, before Fox had time to swim back to land, Rabbit and his friends danced home as fast as they could. Left, two, three, kick. Right, two, three, kick. Left, skip. Right, skip. Turn around home. Can we try that dance now? No. Come on. Yeah. You You can do it. Ready? Left, two, three, kick. Right, two, three, kick. Skip. Right, skip. Left, skip. Turn around. I knew you could do it. Good job. What, you didn't do it? Yeah, we did it. You didn't do it? I did that. You didn't do it, the girl? We did a good job, though. I think we did. How come you don't like to dance? I thought you were a dancer, Thomas. You didn't want to do it? All right. Okay. It's getting dark. It's getting dark outside? Yeah, I know. Okay. It is starting to get dark. Okay. Maybe you've had a day like this. This is called my no, no, no day. Did you ever have a no, no, no day? That's not nice, I know. Okay, let's see what a no, no, no day is like. Uh-oh, does she look like it's going to be a no, no, no day? She's on the sidewalk. Doesn't look like she's very happy, does it? My no, no, no day. Yesterday, I woke up and Bob was crawling around my room licking my jewelry. So I shouted, get out of my room! And that was the start of my no, no, no day. Then I came downstairs, downstairs and I saw that egg, that egg. I cried and cried and said, I can't eat that. And Mommy said, you could eat it last week. Look at Bob eating his mashed banana. After the terrible egg, I didn't like my shoes either. 
So I took them off all by, my sh all by myself shouting, no shoes! And then we had to go shopping and mommy said, please stop wiggling, Bella. But I couldn't, couldn't stop wiggling and in the end I shouted, get me out! Mommy said, you will give Bob an earache and you're giving me a headache. And Bob poked me and said, ear. <laughs> At lunchtime, Sasha and her mommy came. They came to play and to have some peanut butter and grapes and a cookie. But my cookie broke. Then I couldn't play nicely and I kept saying, no, no, you can't be princesses. And in the end, Sasha and her mommy went home. Uh-oh. In the afternoon, it was my ballet lesson. Hey, I ballet. Me too. <laughs> ballet is too itchy. But I was very loud. And Mrs. Clark, Clark stopped playing the piano. And Mrs. Louisa said, dear, oh dear, perhaps you should sit in the corner for a while. On the way home, we met the lady who lives next door. And she said that Bob was the sweetest thing she'd seen all day. And then she said, and how is Bella? How do you think Bella is? I was a long way behind, so I had to shout, I have a hurting foot. And Mommy said, keep, could I keep my voice down and could I please stop lying on the sidewalk? Look at her. Then it was time for my supper and my bath. But those peas were too hot, too hot. And our bath was too cold. And I was too wet. And it was too minty. <laughs> She's silly. After that, I rolled and rolled and rolled and said, no bed, no, 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 no. But I rolled all over my room, and then I rolled into Bob's room, and I said, bed is for babies. <laughs> and then I yawned, just a little yawn, just a very little yawn. Then I crawled into my room, and Mommy said, who wants a story? And I said, nobody. <laughs> but she came into my room anyway, and we cuddled up, and we had my best story about fairies and cake. Oh, oh. I yawned again, and I said very quietly, today was a very bad day, Mommy. Sorry. And she kissed me goodnight and said, I know. We all have those days sometimes, but perhaps you will be more cheerful tomorrow. And I was, I was, I was cheerful all day long. Does she look happy? And look at her. She's not on the sidewalk anymore, is she? Nope. Does she look happy? So, yeah, I know. All right. What did we think of that story? Good. Good. I think that's a one, two, three, four thumbs up. Four thumbs up? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Maybe even Six. five. Six? Five hundred. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't know. I have three more stories and not enough time to tell them. I don't know which one I want to tell. I think I will tell... Let's see. I think I'll tell Happy Birthday Moon. Happy Birthday Moon? Did you know the moon had a birthday? No. Do you think the moon has a birthday? No. You don't? No. All right. Well, I don't know. Let's see. One night, Bill looked up in the sky and he thought, wouldn't it be nice to give the moon a birthday present? Wouldn't that be nice? Um, excuse me? Could what, This is being... But Bear didn't know when the moon's birthday was or what to get him. 
So he climbed a tall tree to have a little chat with the moon. Hello, moon, he shouted. But the moon did not reply. Maybe I'm too far away, thought Bear, and the moon cannot hear me. So Bear paddled across the river and hiked through the forest into the mountains. Does he look like he's getting closer? Yeah. A little bit, huh? He does look closer to me. <coughs> now I'm much closer to the moon, thought Bear, and it got, again he shouted, Hello! This time his own voice echoed, and it echoed, Hello! And Bear got very excited. Oh boy, he thought, I'm talking to the moon. Tell me, asked Bear, when is your birthday? Tell me, when is your birthday, replied the moon. Well, it just so happens my birthday is tomorrow, said Bear. Well, it just so happens my birthday is tomorrow, said the moon. What do you want for your birthday? What do you want for your birthday? Bear thought for a moment. And then he replied, I would like a hat. Oh, goody, thought Bear. Now I know what to get the moon for his birthday. I would like a hat, too, said the moon. Goodbye, said Bear. Goodbye, said the moon. When Bear got home, he dumped all the money out of his piggy bank. Then he went downtown and he bought the moon a beautiful hat. You like that hat? Yeah. You think the moon will like it? Awesome. That night, he put the hat up in a tree where the moon could find it. Then he waited and watched while the moon slowly crept up through the branches and the moon tried on the hat. How does he look? Good. You see he has the hat on? Okay. Hooray, yelled Bear, it fits just right. During the night, while Bear slept, the hat fell out of the tree. In the morning, Bear found the hat on his doorstep. <gasps> so the moon got me a hat too, exclaimed Bear. He tried it on and it fit perfectly. Look at Bear, look at Bear in it. Yeah, but just then, the wind blew Bear's hat off his head. He chased after it, but it got away. That night, Bear paddled across the river, and he hiked through the forest to talk to the moon. For a long time, the moon would not speak to him, so Bear spoke first. Hello! Hello, replied the moon. I lost the beautiful hat you gave me, said Bear. I lost the beautiful hat you gave me, said the moon. That's okay, I still love you. That's okay, I still love you, said the moon. Yeah. Happy birthday, said Bear. Happy birthday, said the moon. And that's the end. <laughs> you think that was silly? <laughs> All right. Do we have time for another quick one? Okay. One very quick one. Yes. I know. It's, all right. This is a kind of silly book called Open Very, Very Carefully, A Book with Bite. I don't know why it has a bite. All right. Oh, a book with bite. You ready? Once upon a time, there was a mother duck with three pretty ducklings and one, hey, wait a minute. I'm trying to read you the story, The Ugly Duckling, but there's something in this book that shouldn't be here. A crocodile. That shouldn't be here. I'm reading another story. Hang on, where did it go? Did it escape? Or could it be hiding? Do you, do you dare to keep looking for it? There. Do you dare to keep looking? You wanna look? Then we'll turn the page very, very, very carefully. It's a 
crocodile. A really big, scary crocodile. What's he doing in this book anyway? He might bite your finger or scratch your nose. Crocodiles like to do that. Stay back, just in case, stay way back. Watch out, he's on the move. What is he doing? He's eating the letters in this book. He must be hungry. Look, he's eating all the O's and the S's. Stop, Mr. Crocodile, you can't eat the letter. Look, he took the O, he took all the O's and the S's. He can't do that in our story. Now he's gobbling up whole words and sentences. We've got to make him stop. Let's try rocking the book from side to side. That's it. Look, he's nodding off. He's going to sleep. He thinks I'm rocking him. Ah, he's sleeping now like a baby. Now, let's find a crayon. If you're going to eat our words, Mr. Crocodile, then we're going to draw on you. Ah, shh, look. They put a tutu and a bow. He's not such a scary crocodile now, is he? Does he look scary? No. no. Not with a bow. Oh, no. Maybe he is a scary crocodile after all. All the drawing has woken him up. And he's not looking too happy about that tutu. Crocodiles don't do ballet. Watch out. It looks as if he's had enough of this book. He's going to make a run for it. Look, he left his tutu and his bow. Here he goes. Ouch! Oops! Maybe it isn't so easy to escape from a book. Maybe if you shake, if we shake the book, he'll fall out. What do you think? Is he falling out? No. Ah, oh, hmm, that didn't work. But look, he's figured out what to do. He's munching a hole right through the page. That crazy crocodile. <gasps> He's nearly out. Goodbye, Mr. Crocodile. Goodbye. You weren't scared, were you? Were you guys scared? No. no. Where, where do you think he'll turn up next? Look what he did to my book. Look. Do we always have a hole in a book? I know. I know. Wasn't that a silly story? Okay, so we had how many? We had five stories. Five. What do you think? What was your favorite? That one. That one, the, the crocodile? Yeah. yeah. That one. Oh, the gro I think, I think we're, you know what? We'll do it on, we'll do it next Thursday, okay? We're going to do the grouchy ladybug, okay? Want to turn around and say goodbye? Bye, everybody. Stand up. Say, we'll see you soon. Can you all say happy holidays? <gasps> happy holiday. Ready? Look at the camera. One, two, three. Happy holidays. Wave. Wave. We did do pearly shells. Thank you. Want to say thanks to Erica and who? Kate. Kate. Erica and Kate.